one pound and a quarter ribeye. Lunch is coming. Uh, yesterday I left. I had to get some more pine needles from my smoker. I went over to the park and in the parking lot they, where the cars run over all the par needles. And just as I pull in, guys, the heavens opened. The heavens opened. It was pouring rain. I said, I'm here. We're going to get it. So I raked them all up. Raked all these up. Shoved them in that big old trash bag. Threw all these wet pine needles in that bag. Came back here to base camp. And there's everything in there. Oh, here's some cigarette butts. We probably don't need that in the smoker. Yeah, there's shells in there. Because underneath, this is a... They got a shell base in there. Oyster shells and whatever. So I just kind of look through it, make sure I get the junk out. Here's a here's a beer bottle. I pull in right where I park, guys. Uh, some drunken fool. He uh, drank a six pack, a, a big tall bud, bud, and then threw them out. And threw the box out too, right there where you park your vehicle. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Yeah, some white trash person. Uh, maybe he was smoking two different brands of uh, tobacco. Yeah, it's uh, it just kind of disappointing when people are trying to just trash everything. But here it's raining, and there was like five people that had been hiking and hauled butt back to their vehicles. They're sitting around watching Steve-O rake. I jump out with my gloves on and had a ball cap on and my rake and I started raking these up. Do uh, you think maybe I was getting some weird looks? Yeah. So anyway, I just brought them home, scattered them all over and then I fired up my two fans and now this has been running all night long these pine needles nice and soft got a few oak leaves mixed with them now I can rake them all up lightly I like I rake them lightly off the slab and it leaves all the shells on the slab then I fire up the old Toro blower and I get back and after I bag up all my dry needles fire up the old Toro blower and I totally blow this friggin barn clean uh, I've been having issues here with this hand ever since you remember I told you I, I did a flip out there on the ramp and I, I when I hit the ground my knuckle was like this and I smacked it hard and now I've got an issue of this pain I don't know if it's arthritis pain or whatever but this whole area in here is numb. I, I'm sure I, I put a fracture in this thing or something. It needs to be healed. And I've used some heat. I've used ice. And this, but there's still numbness in there. It's kind of tracking. This is coming out. This is, doesn't hurt so much. There's a pain in here. I'm going to work on that too. Uh, but right in here, it just sits and throbs in here. Right in this area right here. So what we're going to do is go out to the beehive, and I've got my I've got my reverse tweezers here. They're actually, if you go out and, and, and type in bee venom therapy tweezers, you will see these. Uh, yeah. So they're cheap. I think these are from. I said it, I think it's here, it says it from Pakistan. Stainless steel, and they got a pretty hefty spring, actually too much spring on them. Because if you let go uh, and grab your bee with it, you actually squeeze him down too much and the guts pop out. You kind of try to grab them by the thorax if you can. And as soon as you're grabbing the stingers hanging out, and then you can, you can direct 
direct the venom right where you want it. So let's go out and do a little bee venom therapy on this hand. I've used bee venom therapy for many, many years, uh, removing skin cancers from my body. Yes, skin cancer from my body. And I've had skin cancer. My grandfather and my father, my father actually died of cancer. My grandfather was always getting cancer and his ears were, they just kept chewing off tops of his ears. Both him and my father were high carb eaters. They ate a lot of oatmeal, they ate a lot of potatoes, they ate a lot of rice, they ate that, all that, all that nonsense. My grandfather would, did not drink, never touched alcohol, never smoked a cigarette. He was a cowboy out in the Dakotas. He was in the saddle crawled in the saddle at 16. He said I was, he was in the saddle for eight years until he got a job driving a buggy for, for a doctor back in the day. But he never drank, he never smoked. Very religious man. My dad, he smoked, uh, but he quit. He quit about 20 years before he started having cancer issues and finally cancer finally did kill him. Uh, but anyway, he would get cancers also. But I've discovered that the carnivore diet, I haven't had any cancer issues for a long time, guys, a long time. I was getting skin cancers uh, all over. And I took a lot of it out with bee venom therapy and also garlic, fresh garlic. I could take garlic fresh garlic cloves over a cancer and it would go away. The top of his hand right here, uh, you hardly can see it. You can hardly see it. Well, you can see it maybe right there. Let me put this camera down here for a minute. Right, right here, there's a little half moon scar about it's about this long. This thing started out, guys, as the size of a pencil eraser. And within a month, that thing grew to this big on the top of my hand. So I went to a dermatologist, and he looked at it, and her eyes got really big. I knew, I knew right then it was cancer, right? So, let me sit down for a chit chat here. So, she looked at it, this girl, and I said, I understand that cancer has a fungal, uh, it has fungal um, component to it. She looked at me, absolutely not. Uh, she was a young girl, right out of school med school you know they're all brainwashed there totally flipping brainwashed in big pharma school all of them all your doctors are brainwashed with big pharma don't look at anything dietary don't ever look at anything dietary don't ever look at anything natural no 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 we have to have drugs 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 uh, that's what works, okay? And you get that in your friggin' skull, all right? Yeah, okay. So, she looked at the, I've got to get you to the surgeon. She didn't even take a sample of it, guys. She knew I had cancer. So I came home told Miss Daisy, I got cancer on this hand. She didn't even say I had cancer. And she said, I'm going to a surgeon. That's got to be cut out. So I come home, and I said to her, I said, well, how long, you know, the fastest this was growing, guys, it's, that's the other thing. Put you on the back burner and let whatever disease you have just engulf your body by the time you get to the carving guy, the knife guy, whatever guy, right? Just let it grow out of control. So, it was, they set me up for appointment and it was way down the road. I told Miss Daisy, I said, by the time, the time I get done farting around here with these doctors this thing's going to be covered the whole top of my hand the way it's grown 
and it was classic guys it had little rough edges around it it was getting brown or it was a dark brown and everything it was growing just like a fungus will grow and it was starting to hurt you could feel that thing growing legs and I had one here on my arm right here right on this forearm too it was a black thing a seed I could feel it growing legs into the meat I did the same thing with here I took my bee venom and went around and around in that thing and in no time at all it turned snow white let them I let that venom pump for about 10 minutes and then the pump quits you know shortly and I took a uh, fingernail and just kind of scratched out the stingers it hurts this this hurts I'm not gonna BS you it hurts but and I'm reading this morning on the internet oh they're just finding out that bee venom kills cancer breast cancer and what it does is goes in and it the venom goes in and opens it up the cancer opens it up starts getting holes in it then they shoot it with chemo and and the chemo combination now i don't know who's doing it i don't think there's anybody around here doing it i don't know where this study was i didn't get into it that much it opens it up and then uh who's bothering me here so anyway yes the venom opens it up and the chemo goes in there and takes out the cancer They're having very good luck with that so anyway uh back to this hand story i went in there and, and finally got in with this guy but but what i did when i got home i grabbed the tweezers and i went in and shook a bunch of bees in a jar i actually had made up a little jar with a little tupperware jar and i took uh, <clears throat> a couple pieces uh they were about eight inches long i drilled two holes in and i put tubing in i forget the diameter of the tubing but i just looked at the tubing and knew a bee could go through that tubing right so i put one down through the top of this tupperware lid and took a little piece of soft fiberglass screen and wrapped thread around it and i took a little smear of um of super glue and went around it let it set up then i took a little bit of of uh silicone and put around to make a nice tight seal on both of those tubes i put the tubes in there uh the tube that went in there with a screen on it went to my mouth all right the other tube was out i made it kind of about 18 inches or so where i get up on a by a beehive entrance that's where the guards are and them guards have got a lot of hot venom in them okay so i put the tube in my mouth I put I first started out doing it and then I would I suck on put the tube up there by a bee guard bee and suck will he be sucked into that Tupperware bowl so fast and so hard he would hit the bottom and splatter him and kill him so I said well that's not functional I need a live bee so then I went and put some um, some Kleenex in the bottom and make a pillowy cushion when they come flying through there when I suck on that tube that would come in there so they were in the they said i got them sucked in there but they couldn't go sucked up and get in my mouth because i had that little screen on that see so anyway then i would take it into the bathroom shut the door turn the lights on vanity light there to see in the mirror what you're doing and also you can see grab with a tweezer if you're hitting somewhere on your face whatever on your ears this is painful now but I took this and I started hitting this this hand. I started hitting this hand here and I was sticking it all the way around. All the way around that thing. Just very close. And then I actually put three dead center. There was some little fissures, fissures opening up in that cancer. And I stuck the stinger. You can guide it with this here, you can guide that stinger right into the target point where you want to hit. So I stuff and stingers in those little fissures in that thing. And my hand, top of my hand, I have probably 30 stings in this top of this hand. And it it puffed up. I'm 
pretty much immune to bee venom, but it did puff up with all that venom in there. I mean, it was like getting hit with a rattlesnake. Anyway, which I've never been bitten by a rattlesnake, but I can imagine. Anyway, the next day, it, it, everything subsided. And uh, as the days went on, I, was, this, I did this like two weeks before I went to see the surgeon. I did this stinging thing, right? So I'm looking at this thing as time goes on. I'm looking, and the edges of this cancer are loosening. I told Miss Daisy, I said, I've killed this thing. Look at this thing. It was no longer locked to my hide, my skin. And, and, the, and the pain of the legs growing. If I would have fooled around with this, guys, well, like they were having me do to get to them to cut this, because you got a mile, uh, waiting list a mile long to get the surgeon, right? He's in there all day long cutting out these type of things. Cutting people's faces up and this and that, on and on. And so I go in and he looks at it and he said, now what I'm going to do, he sh pulls out this little hook, hook looking scalpel. He numbed me up, had a little needle. He's going around poking the whole th top of my hand. I got to numb you up. Okay. Have at her, Doc. He numbs it up. He gets in there with a little hook scalpel, and he cuts this whole friggin' chunk out. I mean, all three layers, guys, of meat comes out of there. All three layers of skin comes out of here. And he said, I think uh, I'm going to go look under the microscope and make sure we don't have any in these margins outside. There's no cancer cells in there. Okay, Doc. So he goes, he comes back. I was sitting there, I would already knew the results, guys, because I knew darn well this thing was just drying up and it was going to be history. He comes back with his little cutie little assistant, and they're both sitting there like... Because he was told by the dermatologist where I first initially went, that I'm sending you a guy that's got major cancer, you got to cut it out. They were sitting there just scratching their head. Him and his little assistant had the weirdest, funniest look, bewildered look, guys, on their face. He said, uh, I, 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 Sir, I don't know uh, what I just cut off of you. I said, well, Excuse me? Uh, yeah, I don't know what I just cut off of you. I can't find any cancer cells in that thing nowhere, but what was really weird, he said, it looked like right in the center of that thing, it looked like a little thorn. It looked like a thorn going in there. Well, guys, that little thorn is one of the bee stingers that I missed when I was scraping them out of the top of my hand. Because I let them pump for like, you know, 15 minutes. They're way past pump out, but anyway, yeah, he, he just, I said, well, doc, that's gotta be, I never told these guys, never told them what I'd done. Never said a word. Why train them? They're not going to change their way. Why would you want to train these people? Why would you want to broadcast this other than what I'm broadcasting to you now on the total corruption and in and, and, and our medical field right now? It's, it's, it's the same with our diet. Now I'm sitting here listening to a dietitian. She's saying a good thing to eat. We really need the sugar in our body. It's a good thing to eat as Lucky Charms. We have been lied to by Big Pharma uh, corruption forever, ever since I was a little bitty baby. And I'm sure it's gone on before that, guys. Way before that. Yes because all the big boys got together and said, we're not fixing anyone today with natural stuff. We're not advertising natural stuff because there is no money in it. We are gonna, we got a bunch of dummies out here that we can work on and make a bloody fortune. And that's what we're gonna do. So I'm here to tell you guys, a natural approach is the way to go. Now this bee venom stuff I'm about to show you is painful, I'm not gonna joke. About it. it is painful but what is painful is this 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 knuckle right here 
there is something tweak attending in that thing or whatever. I'm going to get it to calm down with this B-Venom. I know I am. But right here, I'm sitting here pressing right now with this, with this tool. This whole thing is numb. It feels like a dentist shot me up with Novocaine in there. It does not feel good. I don't get, I don't start feeling things till I'm back in here. So I got a major issue in here. I'm thinking, and I'm hoping, because I do not want to see a surgeon. I'm thinking and hoping if, if I nail this thing good, I'm thinking about seven hits in here, and I'm thinking I'm gonna, I'm gonna pop it in here. I've got pain in here. If I push here, right in here, or if I take this finger, I start pulling it down. I have tweaked tendons in there or something. And something is tracking here into this knuckle. This is all numb in here. And it'll sit there at night in this whole area to sit there and throb like a toothache right in here. So anyway, we're going to work on that. But I just thought I would give you a little uh, tune-up on my history of uh, cancer. The cancer end of this thing, uh, I've told you before, I had prostate cancer and they removed it. PSA readings, I'm, I'm well over a year past. There's no cancer coming back. And I think I did stop that cancer because I started doing some natural things prior to the surgery, uh, at least six months before the surgery. Um, yeah, and uh, I think I stopped it dead in its tracks. I have no uh, PSA is zero now. It's been that way for we're going to be going, we're going on almost two years now. There's no cancer. I have gotten zero cancer, skin cancer, uh, from my diet. Uh, they keep pushing, Big Pharma keeps pushing. We need carbs, we need fiber. Those two things we need. We need fruit and fiber. That is a lie. And they need lots of vegetables. That is another lie. You need lots of greens. You need oats. You need to eat them oats. You need, you need that, you need them wheat. You gotta have that whole grain wheat. All that is total bullshit, okay? We need quality fats in our diet. And I proved it as a guinea pig. I told my primary care physician, he's telling me, <clears throat> even he told me the body, human body runs on sugar. You got to have sugar. I said, this body, this body doctor does not, okay? And I don't know if I'm something special. Maybe I'm an alien from planet Ekateka. But I'm telling you right now, me and my ancient ancestors way back in the day, they were total carnivores. And they were functioning very well. My parents and grandparents and on and on, <clears throat> no, they were not. They were hard carb eaters. And mainly the reason they are hard, hard poor carb eaters is because they kept themselves above starvation. But as far as, you know, because they killed out like a lot of the game, wild game way back in the early days as the pioneers came through. They were com competing with the Native Americans and this and that. And then they go ahead and slaughter. They had to really brainstorm, let's slaughter 60 million bison. We have to kill the bison because we cannot control these Native Americans. These Native Americans are one badass sons of bitches, okay? They don't want their land stolen. They are badasses because they were eating bison, okay? That was their main food source. And you, and then, of course, we had to bring them down. The Spaniards came in, of course, and gave them smallpox. The story goes on and on and on and on how we destroyed the entire Native Americans, Indians, okay? So they were badasses, okay? So, and they lived a long time, too. They didn't, you know, they said, oh, they only lived uh, 30 years of the uh, bull. That's bull. They lived a long time. Because they're granted, they would eat some berries and stuff in the spring and this and that, but they're basically carnivores, you know. 
they may take some acorns and make some kind of crappy little bread out of it. Maybe when game was scarce, whatever. But those people were tough and they were badasses. Today, we're a bunch of candy asses, okay? Candy asses, Fruit Loops, Cheerios, all this nonsense they're feeding to you. I've seen the other day on the commercial, this just cracks me up. They got these two little bottles. You've probably seen them. I'm not gonna call out the people, but you know who they are. They got a green bottle and a little pink bottle. One's dehydrated fruits. The other one is, is, is dehydrated veggies. And they put them in a capsule and you see these people eating six at a time. Total nonsense. Total stupid nonsense, guys. Absolutely ridiculous. But it's a, it's a mind, you know, brainwashing thing that they're doing to everyone. And it's working. It's working. It's a lot of far left stupidity, okay? They are trying to get you full control. If we can keep you fat and sick, fat and sick, we can control you. Yes, we can. So that's their plan. Don't fall for it. It's total nonsense. We're going to keep getting it on for a very long time. We're going to be happy. We're going to be strong. And we're going to be getting it on, working these bees for a very long time. Stick, with, stick around with old Steve-O. Let's get out back and get some bee venom. I just stuck two in me. And with that, and with that, these bees get really cranked up. You see them flying here. That came from that hive. They're smelling, they're smelling that banana smell off of this tool right here. These are pumping away, quite painful. Nice thing about this, you can position them. So what you do is you say you hit that hive there, right? You come over here to another hive. You got your feeder jar here. I can take this feeder jar and move it back a little bit here. Boy, they're testy. They are testy. Move this feeder jar back just a little bit, exposing the hole. And one sticks its head up, and you grab them. You grab them like so. See his butt sticking down here? Let me get over here. And I'm going to just plant him right there. There we go. After, after you take... I'm going to sit here and get popped in the face here in a second. They're smelling this venom on me, and they're not liking it. Just, it triggers them, okay? It really triggers them. I'm going to go to the far end down here. This whole area in here, just this little bit of fooling around. Here, we got a little rainwater here. Boy, they're eating that pollen sub, guys. Yeah, they're just following me around. They're really pissed right now. I think what I'm going to do is go in the barn and spray. They, they smell a lot of venom on this. So as soon as I open up that, that jar, move that jar back, they're smelling this and they're coming out in full force to try to zap me. Uh, what did I get yesterday here? Looks like I got one inch. I'm going to go in the barn and rinse this off with white vinegar. And then I'm going to go over yonder and, and get, collect some more bee venom. All right, I got a little, little white vinegar here. I'm gonna just spray that tip of that. Yeah, now they're clean. They can still smell this, this site though, right here. 
So I'll grab a bee, move away from the colony, and then administer another hit. I'm thinking, I'm thinking I'm gonna put about three more hits in that knuckle right there. And then we're gonna just sit and wait. Oh, while I'm getting my coals ready for my steak. Uh, and where I put that stake on, then I'll probably, you see that, you can see that stinger moving right there. You, you see it moving? It's got a pump, and it's just sitting there pumping that venom in out of that, out of that poison sack. So, yeah, let's just, uh, there's a couple nice hot hives here. Wow, they're just, they're drinking syrup, guys. They're sucking up syrup, guys, like Hunter on a crack pipe, let me tell you. Let's move, let's move from that area. Let's move from that area before we get our ass totally kicked. <laughs> Took one right on the nose. No, that's not. Yeah, and the one that has stung me on the nose, it just keeps going, I want to bite you now. Now it's in my hair. Oh, you're dead, girl. You committed suicide. Um, yeah. This one on the tip of the nose. I got the stinger out very fast. It's hurting, but the faster you can get that thing out of there, the better, obviously. Yeah. So, let me see if I can snatch one off the landing here. I got him by one leg. I don't want him by the leg. I want him right there. There he goes. I got him. I got him. One, two, three, four, five. Let's go with five. Yeah, let's go with five and see how that goes for us. And, uh... Yeah. And really, right now, the endorphins have kicked in. The endorphins have kicked in, and the pain is, subs is subsiding, uh, uh, actually. The pain is going down. So anyway, uh, yeah, I'll keep you updated on this, on this pain issue here. And the trauma in there. Uh, I think I'm gonna. I think what I'm gonna do is jack a couple. I think I'm gonna jack a couple right in that knuckle right there. Also, because there's something going on between that that tendons and all in that thumb, up into that knuckle joint right there. And you can see a slight bit of swelling right here. You see a little bit of swelling right here. It's not so much swelling as there is there a tendon issue in there. These are functional. I do have functional meat hooks, okay? But there's pain in there. And so we don't need the pain. So Oh, steve -O's gonna make it go away and i want you guys to try a steve-o uh, life-changing experience and that will be going on a carnivore diet go keto at first 
and then switch in totally to a carnivore diet. I don't know what issues you have, whether it is cancer, or whether it is diabetes. Uh, yes, uh, IBS issues, constipation issues, all of that, all of that is coming from a high, high carb, high grain diet. Coals are nice and white. Make sure they turn white. Wire brush your screen off every day. There it is, guys. Steve-O isn't gonna enjoy that. And do I ever lose my taste for great nutrition? Nope, I crave it. Once you become fat adapted, you will no longer cons crave sugar. Sugar is poison. It's for the bees only, not for the human body. All right? Very simple stuff. If you're consuming grains, bread, pasta, rice, all that, when it hits your belly button, it turns to sugar and puts your body in a high state of inflammation. I am no doctor. I am a backwoods beekeeper. I'm telling you, I'm shooting you the straight skinny on this. So we will enjoy our steak every day. If you go to a restaurant, what are your sides, sir? Because I do go to Longhorn, Miss Daisy and I. Or she like, she's Italian, she likes Carabas. And they say, what are your sides, sir? And I said, eh, give me some broccoli. What is your other side, sir? Give me uh, double broccoli. That's it. I should do double steaks, but anyway. Yeah, so uh, what are you drinking, sir? I'm not drinking alcohol, no. I'm drinking tea, unsweet tea with a lemon, a little lemon, that's it. I am one happy camper when I leave that restaurant, guys, and my little tum-tum is full. Okay, guys, that there's no longer any pain right now. I feel no pain whatsoever in that. I see a little swelling because I just slammed it with, and it's got a pink, pink texture to it. It's got a little pink texture to it. I will leave these stuck in my hide uh, another 10 minutes, and I'll just take my, uh, I got a little paring knife, and I use it as a scraper, and I'll just scrape out that, those stingers, and that's it. And we're going to let that rock and roll for 24 hours. And then we're going to see how that goes. I did not sting this knuckle down here. I'm gonna let that go because that don't feel it's getting better every day down there but it's been going on for over a month with us and now it's tracked into that joint there so anyway um, I can feel it right now the pain is out of that knuckle I don't feel any pain at all so we'll see how that goes I'll keep you posted on dr. Stevo's fix self fixing program get yourself some Bee Venom tweezers. They're cheap. Yeah, and you can too can start administering, uh, you know, medical attention to your own body. All right, I'll see you soon. Bees happy, be strong. We got to keep getting on and keep working them bees all summer long. See ya.